recycling, um, not just all the oil that we, uh, waste oil that we use in the public works, but even in the cars that you have gets recycled. Um, if you think about it, we recycle a million gallons of wastewater a day into clean water. Um, and of course, uh, computers, electronics, and batteries are really coming forward and we participate in the county's uh, hazardous waste recycling program. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, recently, council entered into a new five-year contract with Republic Services. Uh, that contract takes, or, uh, takes effect July 1st. Recycling options uh, have been incorporated into the contracts in the past. We've left that open uh, so that we could go through these options and have a little bit more time for council to think about it and decide which direction to go to, and then we can amend that contract. Um, specifically, this would affect about 3,000 of our residential parcels as they're, they're the ones that currently get assessed for that service. The current recycling location is at the Public Works Garage. It consists of one 30 cubic yard commingled container that uh, people are welcome to put plastics, glass, and metals into. And then we have four eight yard containers uh, for mixed fiber, paper, cardboard, that sort of thing. <coughs> Um, in addition, under our contract, Republic offers voluntary uh, curbside where if you pay an additional $16, $6 and I believe 16 cents a month, um, you're provided a cart and Republic picks those up on a bi-weekly basis. Um, one thing about the current recycling location is that we believe that it requires relocation. Um, we're concerned with traffic conflict, conflicts in the public works yard with all the heavy equipment and the public cars that are turning in there. Um, we also have a lot of congestion, especially in the winter time. And then also we've got a need for storing valuable materials in the yard that don't necessarily need to be in the building. And we'd like to be able to secure that yard. So the three options that I believe are before you are the contracting with the Manistee County's Public Act 69 program. Uh, number two, looking at mandatory uh, curbside recycling, which would require all 3,000 parcels to participate, or continuing with the status quo with the exception of a, a relocation of the site. We broke the, each of those three uh, programs into the pros and cons that we've been able to do, uh, determine from our research. So some of the pros of the county's program are that they would propose adding a second site in the city, so we would have the relocated site plus a second site. Um, the administration of that entire program would be handled under the contract, under the county, and they handle that by contract. Uh, the county provides a more robust educational component currently and would be available to our customers. Uh, the county also contracts monitors to weekly review the sites and look for violations of what's being put in and also do general cleanup of the area. And then it supports the intergovernmental cooperation that is in the council strategic plan. The cons are that it would be an increase in cost to each of the residential parcels, and we'll summarize those costs in a little bit. Uh, there would be some cost to develop that second site. We haven't honed in on exactly what that would need to be. It would depend a lot on where it's at, and uh, the county's looking into what kind of participation the city would, would need to provide, but um, I believe there would be some additional cost for that. Um, in the past five years, the cost of the county's program has gone up 30%. Um, although adding the city and, and the 3,000 customers would certainly stabilize that. And then even the cost that is assessed to the county, uh, to each of the county residential customers that are part of this program um, is partially subsidized by the county general fund. Uh, mandatory curbside recycling. Uh, the pros are that it's the cleanest option. A Republic has uh, offered a 92 gallon tote or would offer to each of the 3,000 residential customers. So it provides the greatest convenience. If you want to recycle, you put it in a separate bin, you take it out to the curb every two weeks and it gets removed. <clears throat> we believe that that would increase and promote recycling in the community as another pro. And some of the cons are that if you live in the city but do not recycle or do not wish to participate, you're still <coughs> be paying the cost for, for that option. 
Um, and when you look at the cost, you'll see that it's also the most expensive, expensive of the three options. And then the, for those who participate very heavily in recycling, uh, the bi-weekly may not be enough for them. When we look at the status quo, uh, this is the least expensive of the three options. It's a very familiar process and we've been running this for a number of years. Um, a pro for us, for the public works, is that it would be removed from the public works site. Um, and if it does get removed, then it could be possibly expanded to serve other things like um, larger uh, yard waste uh, delivery point and maybe even things like Christmas trees and leaves that people could deposit. Um, some of the cons are is that it doesn't support the intergovernmental co cooperation. Um, the public works is required to monitor that site and do cleanup. And as you can see in the picture, it happens quite frequently. Um, and it doesn't have that second site that the county would offer. None of these, we, we just took a snapshot of two potential locations. Um, I think there's a, actually a couple others that we would want to explore. But this is just one example, and the laser works. This is a uh, aerial of the public work, of the industrial park, and the public works location is right here, so that's where the, the current location is. There's a parking lot here that was constructed by the uh, community mental health. That parking lot has been quick, quickly deeded back to the city, so it's the city's ownership now. And what we've shown as an example is the potential of the fence around that site uh, put the four dumpsters like we normally have. And it doesn't show up real well on, on here. Hopefully it does on your computer screens. But we could create a couple bays for storing other things like leaves when people want to drop those off or possibly Christmas trees or other things. Another potential site that we've talked about is the Maywood water tank. Um, on the left-hand side, in the upcoming budget, we budgeted a security fence for around that tank to uh, eliminate or, or help prevent vandalism to the electrical controls, the panels, the backup generator. We've experienced some issues in the past, and there's a possibility that there's enough land there where we could add some additional fencing, add some gravel, and also provide some additional drop-offs. Um, another one that I didn't do a, a slide on, but just thought, off the top of my head um, would be the Arthur Street next to the Arthur Street bolt launch. We've got a parking lot there. We don't own that land, but maybe there, there's an opportunity to work with consumers. Um, it's very visible, so we need to make sure that that site is uh, kept clean, but maybe because it's so visible, uh, there's less uh, abuse to it. And then, you know, we would need to look at some other options as well. <coughs> when we look at the cost comparisons, um, the annual, the first column is the annual per residential parcel. So for every residential parcel, the Public Act 69 uh, program from ASD County this year costs $16 per. Um, and the county sets that rate each year during the budgeting process. If we look at mandatory curbside recycling, uh, Republic Services estimated about $2.25 per parcel per month which would bring that to an annual cost of about $30 per, per parcel. And then to get the status quo, we backed up how much we pay for each of the, the poles on the 30 yard dumpster and on the 40 yard dumpsters, and then divided that by the 3,000 parcels to come to an $8 per parcel. Um, currently that is paid for as part of the, the millage assessment that um, is out there. And then we can look at the total annual cost uh, multiplying each of those by 3,000. The county program uh, would cost overall about $48,000 annually. The mandatory curbside recycling about $90,000 annually. And the status quo currently costs us about 24,000. In the, the third column, we put additional costs. Um, we estimated if we had to put in uh, some fencing, uh, security lighting, and maybe a camera at a second site uh, for the, the county program, could add an additional cost of the ten to fifteen thousand dollar range. The mandatory curbside recycling with Republic, um, we're pretty confident that they would require a minimum term for that. Um, they would uh, be purchasing all the ninety-two gallon totes, three thousand of those, and so they would need at least a period of time 
to have some cost recovery on that. Um, and we're not sure what that would be yet. And then the status quo, um, the relocation um, would come out of the, the current reserves uh, that are in the fund. So really to summarize, uh, I think the county uh, program and the status quo uh, really provide similar service levels to the, to the community with the exception that the county level would provide a second site to the community. Um, it would provide that educational aspect and it would handle all the administration and the cleanup and monitoring of it. Um, but the status quo is half the cost of what that county program is today. And then when we look at the curbside recycling, um, certainly it, it promotes the, the reuse, reduce and reuse, and, and as part of our culture, um, what's being taught to our kids is a lot different than what was taught to me when I was in school and, and maybe some of you when, when you were coming up. Um, but that also <coughs> costs are quite a bit more. Um, and if the council did, wasn't sure if the community's ready to move to, in that direction, um, Republic has also offered to do a pilot project where they would purchase 100 of those containers, select a portion in the city to uh, have them used for a, maybe a two to three month period and evaluate how, much, how successful that is. Before we get to questions from Jeff, we have representatives from the County PA 69 uh, program with us. I don't know if you would like to add some commentary. Um, hi, I'm Sarah Archer. I'm the recycling coordinator for Manson County. Sarah? Sarah. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, Sarah. <coughs> sorry about that. New, new procedure. I'm not used to. I'm Sarah Archer. I'm the recycling coordinator for Manistee County, and I did provide you with some information there in front of you, an example of some of the education that we use. One is our um, our flyer guidelines, and the other is a the newsletter that we send out monthly. So it does change topic um, at each month. Um, the one thing I wanted to address was the cost that um, that Jeff had calculated into there. I'm doing some of my preliminary figures. Um, based on some of the pools and things that you did, I have already considered the cost of um, security cameras, um, not so much the lighting, but um, that could be backed out as a, the additional cost for our program, because I have already kind of budgeted that into our um, calculations for um, the program itself. Um, it would be a great, um, I think, benefit to your residents to come on board with this program, only because of the additional education component that's there. We offer a toll-free phone number, and the majority of the calls that I take in my office are actually from city of Namesee residents. So obviously, there is a culture mm -hmm. here wanting to do the right thing with their materials and wanting to make sure that they go into the right, um, the right, pl right place. So I think just that alone, having the availability of someone who can actually direct them in the right place for the materials is, is really key. Um, also, I think the city has great influence in this, in this county, and the, just the move to a broader scope recycling program and really helped to influence adjacent communities here and help to bring us a little bit more unified recycling program to really make an impact um, as a county wide for residents. And I think tourists that come into the area are really looking for a stronger program than what's is available at this time. So that's really all the commentary about that. Thank you. Uh, I do have some questions on the cost difference between the city of Manistee and the county. Hey, are all the outlying areas that are currently on the program paying $16? Or what's the current fee? Yes, they, um, the county board sets the fee. It is $16 at this point in time. We don't um, foresee an increase in the next couple of years. We're trying to maintain that at this point in time. Um, and it is across the board. So all of our seven townships that we have participating at this time all are assessed the same. So there's no difference um, from township to township. Did it just turn to 16 this year? Yes, it just went up to <coughs> before then, right? It was 13 before. That's what I read on the right, right. And really, it's, it's an annual fee, so it's it's really, <coughs> when you really look at it in perspective for other services that we offer, you know, residents, it's, it's <coughs> Is this the first increase you've had? Um, I think initially it went up a dollar or something from the very beginning of the program. It went up the first year to, uh, I think, from 12 to $13. And so, yes, this is the first increase we've had. It's, How was that bill? Is that billed into your taxes? Or Yes, the county is, uh, assessor um, does that on the winter tax bill. Um, there are other options. We have one of our communities, Maple Grove Township, who actually <coughs> does um, fund all of their solid waste 
services through their general fund. And so they choose to, rather than have their residents assessed because they're already collecting funds, um, just write the check to the county um, treasurer uh, for that service right from the general fund. Let me highlight that shows up as a county levy, not a city. Okay. I guess if the city were to go on, you're bringing in 3,000 more basically customers at 16, would there be, because you're bringing so many on at one time, would there be a reduction or, or something not being paid for currently? Well, we'll be adding a second site, so the cost to add that second site and containers and collection of materials, we would anticipate because the second site might be in an additional location that would be more accessible, that there might be more usage, so we really, um, I've split the, the tonnage between the two sites thinking there won't be an increase, but it probably will reflect an increase in the processing for the recyclable materials, hoping that people will use it more than what they're using it now. So there is additional cost for those two, um, for the additional site than just one site. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, okay. I understand. Where, where do the recycled materials go? Our, our hauler right now, he, he takes them to um, Ludington where they're actually set, put into a transfer trailer and they're transferred down to um, Holland to West Shore Recycling where they are processed there. I think, I think the county option doesn't get around one, one of the issues that we have here. Uh, as a matter of fact, a, a non-city resident spoke to me this afternoon that is objection that we've got a sign posted at our recycling site that says the site's available to city residents only. And even even going with the county, we, we still would have that issue at hand. Yes, and we do. And we have that issue at all of our sites. It is a problem. I mean, recycling's a great thing. Everyone wants to participate no matter where they're at. They don't really think of it as being, you know, belonging to one community or the other. And that is something we struggle with every day as well in our program. But we don't um, we don't turn people away necessarily. We try to encourage them to use the site that's in their home community because that's really where they're paying to use it. Uh, and through education, trying to help them to understand that. Um, the hope and the goal for the county is that we will have all of the townships on board and all of the cities and villages on board so that we won't have to worry about that. And so this is a step towards that goal is to have the city come on board with the program so that we can just have one uniform program. It won't matter where you're at in the county use it freely without, you know, any kind of you know, second thought. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. My next question is for Jeff. Um, you indicate the uh, calculated cost at $8 uh, per parcel is coming out of the millage right now. So, where is that 1.15% on the property? Let me clarify a little bit. All of those revenues are co-mingled inside the understand. I understand. So there's not really a segregation, yeah. but it's coming out of the records. That $24,000. Well, yeah, we, 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 back, we, went, yeah. Yeah. we went back through the last 12 months of the billings <clears> from <throat> Republic and totaled up how much the, the cost of recycling cost <clears> that <throat> program and then extrapolated that out to create a uh, per parcel cost so that we could compare these on a kind of an even basis. Okay. When I look at, at status quo and I, and I look at uh, PA 69, um, so similar to collection system, it's just a matter of who's doing it uh, and, and who's maintaining the site. And I would fully agree that we need to get the recycling out from uh, the city garage area. So that area could be secured at night. And we need some way to uh, monitor to make sure people aren't dumping uh, trash and bulk items out there like we've combined at the city garage all camp. If, if we're already absorbing the cost of that, then it's not an increased cost to the citizens uh, here in the city. Um, I would, would very much favor an option or relocating um, because it's very similar. Um, I, I look at the mandatory curbside. I had a conversation with my wife, and her 
her statement was that she was part of the voluntary recycle, but it was such an inconsistent pickup. She pulled it back to the house more than more than they picked it up, uh, so she discontinued the service. Now I understand if you if you make that citywide, um, you're probably going to have a more regular pickup. But then my question would be for seasonal residents that are gone, you know, and they shut their utilities <coughs> out and reduce their cost at the group, and they have the option of, of opting out when they're not in residence in the city. And, and what impact would that have on the overall cost? What's that? What I mean, you know, some of the water. Mm -hmm. um, they, they still pay the the uh, ready to serve charge, mm -hmm. no consumption, and they can have their meter pulled for fifty dollars, mm -hmm. and then not have ready to serve charge. So I don't know if you heard that. Um, yeah, I heard it. Okay, then if somebody had their meter pulled, we could discontinue charging them for recycling. But that would probably be about the only way we would know for sure that they're gone. I mean, we tra charge people for uh, trash pickup. When they're gone, the parcel has to be vacant in order to not receive a levy. Okay. So if they're signed up for it, they pay for it. I mean, if you look at the straight dollars, eight sixteen. You know, I'm looking at status quo, but as I sit here and think, I'm not sure that we're comparing same services. Because that your sites again for the sixteen dollars is that monitored? Yes, they are. By cameras or by a person? In some locations, we have both a monitor and a, a human being monitoring. <laughs> and so the fencing and security, I mean, you would make sure that it was secure area so people just can't come in at any hours. There would be certain times. We have. Our sites currently are open and accessible 24 hours of the day, seven days a week. So we do not have fencing and where they're closed off. They are open at all times. Well, how do you prevent what we have currently where people just dropping off garbage? Um, the locations where so we have one we have one major problem area right now. It's located at, in, at the Betsy Gallus School Lot 115. So that is our problem child at this moment, trying to determine how to best secure that site. It's a challenge because we are working with the school. We can't just put a fence up without the school board's approval. So we're working on some different solutions there. At our other sites, they are adjacent right to the um, municipal offices or in sites that are um, much less likely to be um, you know, dumped on, mainly because of the location itself. But we do have regular site monitoring. There are people from the community, so they take ownership of that. Uh, we pay them for a couple of days a week to go and check it out. They're there almost you know, every day on their own, just making sure that the sites are kept up and clean. When there's illegal dumping, ours are not, um, we're not seeing the large bulk items um, that you are not making up so much. Mostly what we're seeing is just household garbage bags, household garbage. So again, I don't know if that's just the nature of where the sites are located, um, that the townships have security cameras there, and because it's local monitoring, people know everybody, and so they kind of um, can keep an eye that way. And um, we have some very active site monitors, and very active participation from our uh, communities that participate. So. But at this point in time, we do not have <coughs> anything uh, around any of so. yeah, uh, uh, Not a lot, but we, I recycle over at the city garage, and you have paint cans and boat shrink wrap and chairs and Adirondack chairs and uh, coat parts. And, and it's always behind the, the metal recycling trailer, so it's hidden. So, um, <coughs> you're saying that your monitors do a good job on that because yes they, they do a good job on that again it may pose us a little bit of a challenge with some of those larger bulk items so we'll have to work on how to manage that again i think through education through having a site monitor there um, pretty regularly to be able to you know talk to people and help educate them about where those kinds of materials should go um, again the hope is that we will have a larger program countywide where we can accept materials at some point in time that and find maybe a business that would take the shrink wrap the boat wrap is a very high value commodity, mm -hmm. and so again, you know, to be able to even establish some kind of a um, business model where we can 
give them options because obviously they want to do the right thing. They're thinking that it might get recycled if they take it to the recycling drop-off. <coughs> and, uh, that's probably their intent for the most part. So. And then the sites, if, if the city does go with um, the county, um, would it be, well, we talked about fencing. Right. And would it be graded and have gravel in it rather than just dirt? Or? We prefer that the sites are selected by the communities and that they're pretty much established and ready for us to just drop, drop the containers in. The county budget, our budget for the PA 69 program doesn't really allow us to come in and make any site improvements. So it would be our preference that they're ready to go um, to just drop in you know, containers. No different than if you were to contract with Republic to do this type of program, um, you know, they would want it just pretty much ready to go if it was be cited for their dumpsters and go off containers. Thank you. The site you have now, that you're currently monitoring. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been any enforcement action taken? Yes, we have. Um, Onekama Township, we've had two incidents of, of oil being dropped in there. The last incident um, we did through security cameras have enough evidence that the prosecuting attorney did take and um, um, you know, find them and prosecuted them. So they were uh, they paid restitution back to the recycling program for the cost of cleanup and the um, removal of the dumpsters and uh, decontamination and cleaning. So, uh, and they were fined uh, as well. So yes, we, we do that when we can. My site monitors on a report, they report, uh, send a report to me um, every week, and they indicate any, and they actually, if, you know, they look at the trash bags that are in there, if there's any indication of who's um, illegally dumping their waste there, the trash bags there, we send them a letter first time around, and then uh, let them know that where they can, you know, what they need to do correctly, and if there's a second time, then we will um, take further action. But uh, the security cameras helped a lot of that particular If there was fencing around it, it is something that you can look at as far as securing, so it's only open maybe during daylight hours? We do have at our Arcadia site, um, because it's in a, in a neighborhood area, they have asked that that site be um, used just during daylight hours. And so we have a sign posted there as courtesy to your neighbors, you know, please use this site only during daytime hours. Um, it's really kind of a natural fencing. Well, they actually have just constructed a fence there. That was at their cost, again, just to kind of appease the neighbor, the neighboring um, community members. Uh, but uh, it is posted, and I think they're having some good observance of that. Do you have people uh, dumping after hours at that site? At the Arcadia site? Mm -hmm. No. No, the Arcadia site's a pretty, um, pretty well used site, but it's used properly. You know? This refers to residential parcels? Yes. yes. It's residential only. Yes. Not businesses. Right. And we do have businesses who use it because, again, they you know, they want to do the right thing. It saves that money. They're not paying to have a dumpster to haul that material away. And so, again, rather than you know beat them with a the stick, we're trying to help them to understand the program, that it is a residentially, it's a residential program paid through residential assessment. And so we've just started a business recycling sponsorship <coughs> program where voluntarily businesses can use it, um, you know, by sponsoring. We are giving them some promotion, um, you know, in return. And that's our hope is that we will get some funding to help support the use of the sites by the businesses through that program. It's just started, so we're, we've just got our first business sponsor. Um, I'm hoping to kick that into higher gear over the next couple of months. Great right. increase in, uh, in bugs and insects, you know, flies and stuff like that. No, we don't. We do weekly service at our, all of our sites, and so nothing's really sitting around long enough to cause any problems like that with pests. And do you have any <clears throat> sites in the city picked up yet? I mean, other than what Jeff has outlined. No, we ha we haven't really discussed it too much. Um, you know, one of the thoughts that I have is that. Um, Manistee Catholic Central already has a PCA trailer there, so um, we have two sites that we participate um, at Onakama Township and at the Betsy Valley School site where there are uh, trailers, and also in Calvary we just established one there with the SEEDS program. And that seems to work really well, so that, again, it helps to support the schools when people come to recycle their household materials. They can also bring their cardboard there just to make sure it gets put into the PCA trailers to support the local schools programs. So we try to partner with uh, those kinds of areas and that what might be a, a potential as, as one of the sites would be even there at the school. But I have not approached them on that yet, so. One of the sites that we picked as alternate sites of the public uh, 
for us for the work. Uh, would, would that be satisfactory for the site for the panel? I haven't personally seen it yet, so I would have to. I would like to see it before I guess I can say it's a good one or not. I guess the only other issue I have is is that I'm I'm looking at the status quo and 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 the eight dollar per parcel cost that, that we're talking about right now. But as I understand it, that cost is paid out of the millers that's collected for refuge right now. If we went to the county, uh, what would happen to that eight dollar per parcel amount of funds? Does it go into the refuse reserve fund or? It would help build the fund balance on the refuse fund. Yeah. You recall that we had to do a rate increase this year because that fund balance had been driven down so low, and it would stay in the fund balance until we got to a point where we could start spending it down. So, so it sort of looks on paper like an $8 increase to $16, but it would actually be a $16 increase per parcel. At least in the short term, yes. Okay. I just want to make sure I understood that. happen to fill up and they they often do during the weekends when people bring materials they don't take them back home because the dumpsters full so they set them outside and when they set outside and the wind catches up it blows it everywhere the fence at least keeps that captured and keeps it where we can contain it and clean it up and it doesn't get into people's yards um, so we were estimating about ten thousand dollars for that parking lot site and just kind of duplicated that for the Maywood site um, a lighting and where we've got uh, power and and, and uh, radio access from our our utility systems um, about excuse me about three thousand dollars to be able to add the security camera and and lighting there. Is that for one site or two? Camera? That would be for one site. The, the intent is only for one site, right? Of uh, the status quo would be for one site, and if we went with the county program. Uh, there would likely be two sites, and depending on where the where that second site would be, um, we need we may need to provide gravel to stabilize that. We may need, need to add fencing, likely add fencing, and may want to add lighting and uh, security cameras. It's probably fair to say that if we had two sites under the status quo, we would probably double the cost, depending on volumes. We would do <coughs> this. Yeah, I'm guessing. Great. I'm guessing the same thing. Um, you know, it's nice to have things accessible. And you know, I see some issues. And I remember with Councilman Zelensky when, when we rode with the snow plows, and it's trash pickup day, and people put their bins out in the street. They very much common down the snow removal. Um, and I could think the mandatory curbside recycling would, would be more of the same. Plus, I just uh, I just don't have a good feel for dictating that everybody will recycle and, and be part of that process. Uh, some things are still voluntary, uh, and people like a choice. So. When you talk about monitoring Jeff, the cameras, <clears throat> is that like um, we monitor Central Terrace or we monitor the marina? Yeah, it'd be a similar system like we do at the beach houses where we would have a camera, it would uh, write to a DVR. If there's no problems, it doesn't get saved. If there's a problem, we go back and we review and try to identify. You can access that from your phone, right? Ed can, I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have the capability to monitor our own sites under status quo, even if we move. 
Yes, yes, and we do that. We do that today, and if we relocated, we would continue to do that with public work staff. Okay. And then my recommendation would be to add a camera to help as a deterrent. Um, at the public works garage, even though we're not there 24-7, mm -hmm. we're there at least eight to 10 hours a day. That keeps some things from happening, but it's the after hours where people leave stuff that they shouldn't. I think we stay with status quo. It has to be locked down. I mean, even when it's off, away from it. it's going to be away from DPW. But I mean, I think it needs to be locked down this half hour. You know, there's a building going for the day. Any other questions? So then, are we looking at bringing this back to council for a determina determination as far as which? I think there's probably a few details to be worked out under any of the three options. Okay. So if there was some indication from council as to which direction you were looking, we would make sure those details were nailed down when it came back here. Do you guys know? Anyway, wasn't it? The main way. Yeah. The 
in both. Both. Both, 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 both. to be facts. Yeah. That's why I want that check. It would be twenty six dollars. There. Well, if one of the reasons why we looked at this site is because is it's a very large parking lot and it's already paved. The cost to put fencing, and these are rough numbers, but the cost to put fencing, um, lighting, and a camera there is about the thirteen to fourteen thousand dollars. I say fourteen. It's, well, it's, the so. it's in that area. Yeah. We didn't get bids on it. We we just asked as contract. But even, even if we did this under a, a PA sixty nine site, we would still have that cost. You still have that cost plus the sixteen dollars per parcel. Yes, and then if we added a second site such as Maywood, we could add, we could come up with an additional thirteen thousand dollars of cost if we put fencing around that and lighting and a security camera. We've assumed that the cost of the of gravel that would be put in there would simply come out of the public works program and we could stabilize the soils that way. So there's a really the basic difference between the two sixteen dollars a month added cost to each parcel. What was your comments? I'm sorry. 16, if, if we go with the PA 69, okay, we're still going to have to improve the site. Yes. And it's going to cost us $16 per parcel additional for the service additional from what we're paying right now. Not the difference yes. between the $8 and, 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 and the And like Sarah said, it would be per site, though, right? $15 additional. Per site. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that cost is there either way. Yes, understood. And like Sarah mentioned, if if they were able to find, or if we were able to find the second site at a, an established location, mm -hmm. such as MCC, where there's already gravel, there's already the paper site there, then you wouldn't have any of the cost of those site improvements. So we're putting that in as kind of a the worst case. Okay. One thing I don't like the Maywood site is it's more isolated, whereas the other one is closer to the DPW garage. Why there would be nobody there and consistent basis, <coughs> at least it's nearby, or there could be some monitoring. I just think what you have proposed here for Maywood is a little bit too remote. Well, the first site is is very close to the existing site. That's not much of a of a disruption. Yeah, it's literally right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the neighborhood site is up there. Is that a residence that's right next to us? At the site of the park? Yeah, the neighborhood site. Oh, the neighborhood site. Yeah. Uh, the Maywood site has is that a residence right, right next to it. Right next to it. Yeah. Yeah. And then across the street is the uh, assisted living house. Yeah. You really want to put a garbage pickup like that right next to the residence like that? There should be some kind of buffer in there. I don't include that one. I wouldn't want that next to me. I, I do like a lot of the, if we were to go with P169, I like the collaboration. I like the fact that everybody in the county is on the same program. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pluses to that. Um, having said that, though, at this time, we've increased a lot of costs to our residents already, and that's like doubling it. I don't ever want to move that out. I'm leaning more towards keeping it in-house, see how we can improve it in-house first keeping the cost low, still looking and working with the county to see what we can do to get that number down so it's more palatable down the road um, for our residents. Because I do like the collaboration and, and having everyone in the county in the same program, I think is beneficial. Now with the county, uh, we're picking up monitoring uh, on the site, we're picking up uh, the cleaning site, if there is any type of issues, such as the neck on the site that they have an oil, um, our people don't have to uh, take that ball and run with it. I understand that, and again, I would very much like us at some point towards that on a financial basis. I'd like to see what we can do to improve what we're already doing while keeping that cost, maintaining that cost for our residents. I guess one thing I'd highlight, the mandatory recycling has some specific terms associated with it to pay back the cost of the carts. But under the other two options, it could be a year-to-year -year decision. If we try this and it doesn't work for whatever reason a year from now, 
you could make the change. But I think that's something that we, why I favor keeping it in house right now, I think it's something we need to continue to look at to work with the county on how we can work there. Um, but from a financial standpoint, I think the difference is just too great right now to. So we won't get sixteen dollars per year at the point we have now. And you know, we saw that with other rates where it was even Everything less of an increase and people really were struggling with that. So to double something like this, I just have a hard time doing that right now. So I think I'm hearing you come back with details on modifying the status quo. We've got a notice charge on the properties right now that pays for the current recycling program. Uh, if they add in that $16, like you say, it's not a real big deal per year. We reduce it to other people. We, we've done the water rate increase. Uh, and, and I understand the necessity of doing that. I just think that this is an issue where the recycling is located right now is, is, is a big part of the issue being able to monitor it and get it out of the garage area, uh, I think solves most of the problem. And, you know, and like the mayor says, it's not an issue where we're locking for a contract or, or like Ben says, not where we're paying back the cost of the totals and stuff like that. Next year, if we want to look at more collaboration <coughs> with the county. I guess the, the issue I see with the county is it still doesn't fix the issue of people outside the city using City recycling as, as a resource that they're not paying for. Only the city residents are paying for this recycling right now. But yeah, I would if we were to direct staff as far as to getting more details. Uh, Councilmember Philly, where would you be leaning towards? I'm not sure right now. Mm -hmm. Do you have a problem at this point? That's a good point about non-city residents. I don't see them on the list. Therefore, we are. We are now. Yeah, we are right now. I understand that. And so you will be on well, the other one. I, I guess, you know, I think I'd like to have it seem voluntary, but I have no, no problem with a buck and a half a month, I guess. You know, I think that's, that's true. That's not like the other issues that we've had before. So you're like a water you're issue, like, so, so you're leaning towards working with the county? Is that what I'm hearing? I'm staying with you right now. Okay. I, I want to think this wrong. Okay. Good point. Ms. Wondersky, are you have a preference right now one way or the other? Yeah, I, uh, I do this minute. Uh, I'm, I'm leaning towards the status quo. Okay. I'm not worried about monitoring with today's electronics and the way I know that that works. If somebody breaking the rules, we have an enforcement agency that can take care of that. That can be done, and I think we can clean a lot of that up if we have some enforcement. I don't like the idea for right now of making it something even mandatory. We have a lot of people who are transit people who go back, who leave in the wintertime. Um, I just, I just leave them towards that school. I'm with Kobe on the road right now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, county. What was the last one? County. Okay, how much, if we were to look at both the county and status quo, how much, what more kind of details do you need? Alternate location is the second one, then Maywood. Well, well, that's like one of my main upset is Maywood. That you don't area. like it or you? Well, it's horrible. It's horrible for everybody that lives up there and has to drive past that to see that in their yard. And I would, I would be kicked if that was that poor guy that right here, this old gentleman right here that's always got yeah, a, right a, a, a chair mm -hmm. for some people to sit, and they put that to him. And every day after look at that, it ain't fair. So this fight was our. That, that's what I that's just, that's 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 just an idea. I understand that, but, but that so you would prefer idea. under either situation to look at it. better locations. Better of uh, just the Maywood or multiple. Both. You don't like the other one either. Oh no, that's fine. I, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm saying both of them were doing two. Both the city and having, or the county having two places. The name the other one's fine. The other one's fine. You fine. just yes. prefer right. interval locations. What other well, kind of information? Somebody did make the comments that they would try to try to put a Catholic Central and try to work in that. Mm -hmm. I don't see Catholic. Okay. Let's no, see how they accept that. 
So we need more. What other details this. do you need to help make a decision both with economy recycling and with keeping it in house? Another location other than Maywood. Um, I think more cost, more detailed cost as far as how would we be paying? You know. Oh, uh, we can try to put something together. But. Oh, oh. I'll wait to see what you put something in there. Okay. All righty. Well, uh, we got to narrow down to two. <laughs> the county and the in-house. Um, I guess I'd go back and we look at, is there another location other than Maywood area? If it was to be kept there, is there something we could do to address the concerns of the visual for the neighbors? Yeah, we'd have to look at, a, at public sites throughout the city. Um, the, if fencing was put up there, we would put the slats in it, like like exists at the public garage, to try to soften that. But um, yeah, we can continue to look for sites, or if you have any suggestions, let us know, and we can vet those. Remembering that we're only really reviewing two sites if we go with a county program. If we're staying with a modified status quo program, then we have one site that there seems to be consensus that it's okay. Mm -hmm. The county is looking for two. Can you deal with one? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you would like two, but you would, for the city, be okay with one site. Oh, yeah. Okay. We, we wanted to offer two because of the population and just accessibility. Again, you have the Department of Central site. Okay. All right, is there any other information to help staff help us make up our minds? What other information do you have currently that you'd like to see? I got this today. Okay. I'm not going to be I just got this. All right. So you guys just want to digest what we're presented tonight before? I would, yes. Do we need another work session or? No. no. So, I'm not for myself. No. Okay. So, you'd be prepared to make a decision if it was brought back in a regular session? I believe so. I just want to think a little bit. You're, good? You're okay with that. And would it be safe to say 1st of July? Your call. Do the mayor. Is that going to be soon enough or do you need an answer by July? Because I know that's the beginning of our. I think that's the 7th, so that's fairly late. I don't have a calendar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it the 7th? Excuse me, how much do we have on the next one? Yeah. Uh, the 16th is, uh, this month is filling out, and the second meeting in July. I'm trying to keep as late as possible to avoid that Monday special session so we can do that candidate selection on Tuesday and avoid that Monday, Tuesday. Um, okay. But the first meeting in July is open and we can aim for that. Can you guys go with that? We'll be good with that. Okay. Discussion on city assessor. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor. Um, the same three choices are before the council as were before. The biggest change is that time is working against us, and I need to help clarify that a little bit. Uh, Ed and I have been dealing with a number of appeals, uh, and while I think we're managing <coughs> fairly effectively, weren't, neither of us are assessors. And in point of fact, we're probably, we have to retain special counsel to deal with appeals through the tax tribunal. And we're probably increasing our costs there fairly substantially because we don't have in-house assessing capabilities. And we've got four appeals that are currently pending that we're having some difficulty managing just in terms of getting signatures. We need an assessor of record. And in fact, as early as perhaps next Tuesday or July 7th, the latest, 
we'll be making a recommendation that at a minimum we have an assessor of record that can sign the stuff that needs to get signed to process appeals and to keep us uh, consistent with state law. Um, so that's a really short-term issue that we're going to need to deal with regardless which of the other three options uh, the council prefers. Uh, the first option that was selected following a couple of work sessions last winter was to advertise for a level two. Uh, we did that, received two applications. The advertised waste was thirty-eight to forty thousand uh, dollars. One of the applicants withdrew. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Bradford and I conducted a telephone interview with the second applicant. Neither of us would recommend retaining him. Uh, the second option is really to uh, contract with the county. Uh, Originally, that was discussed as a five-year contract. They want some continuity because they would likely have to retain additional staff to take on a contract as large as the city. Uh, we've had discussions with both the equalization director and the county administrator, and they've agreed that they can shorten that to a three-year term. But the equalization director has expressed reluctance uh, based on his pending retirement. Um, the third option, of course, is to hire a private contractor who could do assessing. That's the road that's been taken by many townships and a few municipalities across the state. I've outlined kind of the ballpark cost estimates associated with those three options. Um, or I suppose the fourth option is we could pursue two of those options simultaneously. We could be advertising for an assessor at the same time that we're advertising for a contractor or we could be advertising for a contract at the same time we're carrying on discussions with the county. Uh, but I need to impress upon you the need that we need to come to a conclusion in the relatively near future, or we're going to be running into issues with the state tax commission. Any thoughts? Is the press firm just for the year? year-to-year -year basis that we talked about? I'm sorry? The private firm just a year-to-year -year basis? Uh, that is possible, yes. So we could Six do that. We year could year. do that for the short term and just effectively buy some time to go through a hiring process to get somebody in-house. That right. certainly is a possibility. I'm going to let you know right now, I feel very strong about it in-house, having our own assessor. I mean, I understand we're, we're hitting right now for time, but I have a very strong opinion about everything in house. And if this was November instead of June, you're right. I think I would agree with you. Um, but it's June. Yeah, thanks, and it, I'm not going to go back in history, but I think it had a process started back in November when it should have. We wouldn't be in the situation we have now. I'm, I'm another very strong proponent of in house for this function uh, because of, I think, how it serves the community. Uh, in the interest of the tax base also. Um, but I also understand that we need to move forward. Uh, I would like a parallel path that we could contract with a private contractor for a short-term basis to allow us to facilitate a thorough search uh, for an in-house. I would be in agreement with that. A contract would have to be at least for the year. Yeah. Um, but during that time period, we could certainly begin the process to undertake a different search for an in-house assessment. Yeah. And I could work with and work with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the case. I'm sorry. That's that's the done and give us some time let's get the right people on board. That's kind of the key. Yeah. Getting the right right we may have fumbled the ball a little bit this time. You know, but we we can uh, definitely patch things up, you know, when you're with a private contractor and uh, be looking for a the other point that I would highlight if we do that and take a short-term contract while we're pursuing a long-term in-house position is I really do think we under-advertise the position. I would agree with that. We need to increase the pay scale, increase the level, and treat it more akin to a department head as opposed to a clerical position. Totally agree. We did start this process back in November, December. Right. We started the process of deciding whether we would contract the position or uh, go with the county or stuff. We didn't 
we didn't really make any conclusion to do anything until January after Jimmy had already retired as far as pursuing options to hire people. One, one other question, if I may, with when she first made known her retirement date was that we advertised at that position that was back in October <coughs> last year. And okay. That didn't okay. take place until okay. January, so we lost that. This is a professional services contract, and rather than go on a straight bid basis, my preference would be that we interview several vendors and bring back a proposal to you, as opposed to just do a, a formal bid. This is professional services. We want to make sure we got the right person, as opposed to the cheapest person. Yes. Yeah, so, in the meantime, that's going to take a while. In the meantime, is the county open to at least getting the signatures that we need for the cases that are pending? We think if we can pursue a professional services contract without going through a formal bid process, we can make that happen pretty quickly. And if not, on a timely basis, I would approach the county to do that on the interim basis. In the contract of service, would they be based out of City Hall or would they? I think we can specify whatever we want, um, and I would suggest that we require some city hall hours uh, and some telephone hours. Right now, we have very limited, very limited city hall hours, so I think it'd be relatively easy to duplicate some sort of public hours that at least exceed <coughs> what we currently offer. I remember we were discussing this back in November. I made some calls. One of the things about contracts is that they don't have people available when you need them. Um, some areas, some areas have a secretary there who very, they're very confident. They can, they can do a lot, and there's somebody always there to answer the phone, answer questions, and that's always reassuring. I would hope that that would happen. That we, would, we would always have somebody there answering the phone. Public service is a critical part of that position. I agree with that. Anything else?